I hope y'all aren't offended by all this, by the way. Um, I am a very hirsute young man, and there's not much I can do. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the next shelf tour video. Can you tell? Number one, I've had plenty of caffeine. And by plenty, I mean two sips. Two sips of this cup. I have not yet even gulp, gulp, begun to drink this cup. This is bourbon flavored coffee from Aldi. And the creamer I'm using is peppermint bark, also from Aldi. We love Aldi in this house. Okay. What are you having to drink this morning or evening or afternoon? Get yourself a little beverage, relax, lay back. Look at all the shit I have to talk about, there's plenty. I have caffeine and I also have this little bracelet that was given to me as a gift. It is Tiger's Eye and Obsidian. This, by the way, is handmade by the director of mine who uh, I've spoken about in previous shelf tour videos. And she makes these with her daughter. They have their own jewelry store. It's called Jewelry Pad. And I'll go ahead and put the, the, the link in the description. It's not, this isn't a sponsorship. This isn't an advertisement. This is purely a shout out of love. I absolutely love her and her daughter and their jewelry is freaking awesome. Also, I just so happens to have a tiger's eye pendant on. She didn't make this, but she gave it to me as a gift at a separate occasion. We give each other a lot of gifts because we love each other so much. Today, we're going to be looking at my sixth, sixth? I don't know how to count. This is my fifth shelf, Gulp. There is no actual bourbon in the coffee, by the way. It just has the bourbon flavor. Without further ado, let us begin. Actually, a little bit of further ado, real quick. I don't remember speaking about these samples in the last shelf tour. I honestly do not recall. I just wanted to go through these real quick, just because I might talk about them in future videos. This is Poop Poop Be Doo by Ego Facto. It's supposed to smell like... Betty Boop, La Dame au Camellia by Jardine de Crevain. I know I butchered that. Citrus Esther by Ether. Ooh. Pichola by Nila Vermeer Creation. I also butchered that pronunciation. And Golden Chiper by Gore Grossmith. Iridel by Nomenclature. Au Modern by Thirdman. Emotional Rescue by Mark Buxton. Au Contraire by Thirdman. And last but not least, Oh Inexplicable by Thirdman. So all of these little fragrances are from Olfactif. They specialize in offering niche fragrances. They're more like brands that aren't very well known or that are much more bold with their selections. I just, I love these. They're so, ooh, there's some hit or misses from these little, these are from clearance packs. I was going to film videos about them, but I think I'm just gonna go individually for them. Gulp, finally dive into my bookshelf number five. And we're gonna start right off with some more fragrance. This time it is Nest by Coco Woods. This is so, oh, it's like drinking hot chocolate out of a wooden oak tree. It's so delicious. And I love smelling it at night specifically. This became a nighttime fragrance for me. Like to go to sleep, Oh my God, it's so cozy. Okay, so we have some more jewelry over here. We got these wooden beads, they're sandalwood, and the elastic, the original elastic, which is this little thing right here, was like about to snap. And luckily my director swooped in. She was like, oh my God, yeah, I'll fix it for you. Oh, fashion. And then this one, my director gave to me as a gift. The elastic was also kind of dying, so she fixed it up as well. Gulp. This was a secret Santa gift. This was from when we were doing this show, She Loves Me, which I had mentioned in previous videos. Oh my God, it's like full circle. It's so crazy how it all like comes back. Each bead is supposed to represent the chakras and I think it's really, really fun. Emily, if you're watching this, I don't know if you're watching this actually, but if you are, um, thank you for this and all the gifts that you gave me as secret Santa, holy shit, she really went off. She went off. She gave me tea. She gave me a little tea diffuser. She gave me this. She gave me like a whole bunch of stuff. 
My God, that was like the sweetest thing in the freaking world. My mom's coworker's mom, I believe passed away or she just wasn't going to wear the jewelry anymore. So she just gave my mom boxes upon boxes of jewelry and ended up keeping this because it's such an interesting piece. This one's not all exciting. This one's just from like a dollar store. This is a hair tie. Is dusty. This is also from my director. She made this herself. This was back when she was just getting started in making jewelry. And it's so cute. This was before she opened, this was years before she opened the jewelry pad actually. Gulp, gulp. Another little bracelet. This one is actually a gift from one of the managers that I had at the restaurant that I worked at. These little beads here, they're glass. And I believe this is from Milan, from when she went to Milan. And she brought me this and I thought it was so beautiful. And lo and behold, the IT ticket that I have now referenced in three videos in a row, like I said, it just keeps making its way down the shelf. I have a movie ticket box. I, why is this out? Remember when I was talking about the coins? Yeah, these are all coins from Canada. This is, uh, from the stake 75. Actually, I see some American coins in here too. I'm about to just shove them back in the damn safe. We've, we've got quarters. We have the 2020 bat quarter. What a mistake. This is a Bahamian quarter from 1998. Ugh, what can get me 25 cents in the Bahamas? I don't know. I've never been to the Bahamas. And we have an Alaskan quarter, 2008. <gasps> A bug has died in my coffee. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Protein. <laughs> I'm kidding, ew. I'm going to just drink around the damn bug, relax. I found this feather and my director put these cool little beads on them. So it's kind of like a bookmark, kind of like a little, just a little something, something. Now comes this giant crystal that I have full of coins. And these coins are from Mexico. This is a fragrance sample from Maison Francisco Jean Paris. And this is Lou à la Rose. This was my, this is actually my mom's, I have to give it back to her. But I love this fragrance. It is very rosy, very soft and chic and mm. So this is a little organite pendant. There's no real science behind organite. I see it more as a meditation tool than as like, EMF protection. That's the main thing that I love about spirituality, how it makes one feel. If it makes you feel good, whatever it is that you're doing, as long as you're not hurting anybody, if it makes you feel good, then good. And if, as long as you are promoting good into the world with what you believe, then good. It is working for you. If you're a staunch whatever, and you're only good when you're in a group of people celebrating, and then you leave and you completely contradict anything that you just said or heard, what does that say about you? And I know, I know who y'all are thinking when I'm saying that. I don't have to say it. I'm sure some of you are within this group and have seen people like that. And if you're one of those people that are within the group, but you actually practice what is being preached within and without the walls of any edifice, then good. I am proud of you. Thank you for being a good human being. Before you're a good ba 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 you're a good human being, and thank you. Am I a good human being for drinking this coffee with a dead bug in it? Gulp. Am I drinking bug juice? A nickel from 1961. We went to the moon in 1969. That's eight years after that nickel was minted. We've got more coins. This is a salt rock candle holder. It gets real hot when you put a candle in it, and I love it. The nice warm glow that comes out of this. I love burning these in, uh, in winter. Ooh, man. I mean, our winter, like I said, is everyone else's summer, but when it gets really, really cold and you have these nice warm glow and it's nice and toasty in the room, ooh, it's delicious. Anyway, these coins are from, I think these coins are all from Ecuador. A little twisty thing. I actually have a little box full of these little twisty things. Um, does that mean I'm 80 years old? Probably. Sorry to break it to you. It's just a whole head of white hair underneath this beanie. That's why I'm just covering it all up. Paperclip. Another fragrance. This was also given to me by the lovely manager that gave me this lovely thingamajig. And this is Narciso Rodriguez for her. If I ever want to smell like a 
boss ass 80s style shoulder pad wearing businesswoman. This is what I put on and I love it. It really does help me. Uh... Sorry y'all, too much bug juice. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Aha, uh -huh. the bug has left the coffee. It is now clinging to the edge of the mug. Gulp. Oh wait, <gasps> oh my God. There's one more thing here that's not book related. Hang on, hang on. Oh, ha ha ha. We've got Belgian chocolate. <laughs> oh no, there's ants. I hate my life. <laughs> my best, oh. And now we're getting on to the books. My best friend's exorcism. This book was so fucking cool. I loved it. First of all, can we appreciate this book art cover? It looks like a fucking VHS tape from 1984. I would not know because I was born in 1993, but look at this. I love this so much. I love it so much. And it was so, so good. My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Definitely check it out. I recommend it. I read it in October for Halloween. If you're getting it for nothing else, get it for the art. I know, don't judge a book by its cover, right? Ugh. But like, you can judge this book by the cover. Get it, get it, get it. Oh my God, get it. When I was at Barnes and Noble, I picked it up and I was like, I don't know if I should get this. There was a store employee. She was like, get it. You have to get it. I read it and it was super good. Get it. So I got it and I loved it. The big book of Sudoku. Over 500 puzzles. I am this much of the way through. I've completed a Sudoku puzzle. Actually, I've completed two of these on a video. I'll go ahead and link it up there. It was only nine. Uh -uh -uh. Uh -uh -uh. Mm -mm. Six dollars, bitch. Still kind of expensive for a Sudoku book, but she thick. We have another Sudoku book. This one looks much more tattered and it's because it was the work Sudoku book that we had at the restaurant. When we reopened again, like with all of the um, pandemic restrictions we were bored for a lot of the time so we had the sudoku book and different ones like we would each work on different ones sometimes we'd do it together it was a lot of fun and um yeah when they closed down for good sad face uh i kept the sudoku book it's in french there's many of mistakes that i've made in that book it's fine though we love a good mistake. Oh my God, my parents at my birth. Wolf in White Van by John Darnielle. This book, you can, t oh my God, there's an ant on it. I've just committed murder on screen. It's just the bug juice, don't worry. You can tell that Barnes & Noble was really trying to get rid of this book. You have the $6 mark on it. You have the $5.98 mark on it. You have the cheap $3 sticker on it. Look at the cheap. This is cheap. And I was like, you know what? I've seen it a million and a half times. Let me go ahead and get it. I don't know if I'm ever gonna read it, but I got it and I, I might read it someday. All those stickers are giving off major supermarket vibes. Life imitates art. So this is runes. It's no secret that I practice witchcraft, particularly divination. And so I'm very interested in runes. I reference this book a lot when I use runes because I've still not learned the damn runes. Whenever I'm casting runes, I'm like, okay, let me see. Bop, bop, bop. I also use runes sometimes as complimentary, like empowerment to any spell work that I'm doing. So I like have them there to represent, represent. Oh, and I really like this book because it's my book, bitch. Spiritual Lobotomy, a journal by me, Joelle Agnon. You can buy this on Amazon right now. Don't worry, the one that you buy will not say not for resale. This is the physical copy of the book. I designed it myself on a free version of Photoshop that I had on my laptop that sadly no longer works. It was on Photoshop and I also used this app on my phone called Over. That's where I got that cool looking Enye and I did that whole thing. You should get it. It's only like, what, $10? Get it, support me. <laughs> please, please, please support me, I'm sad. That's my merch, okay? That's all I've got. You want some of these as merch? Actually, that'd be a pretty cute idea. You get yourself a jewel from Jewelry Pad and then you get this gem from Amazon. Oh my God, did I just solve your Christmas gift problems? I did. You can't say I didn't, because those are ideas. How to Be an Anti-Racist by 
Ibram X. Kendi. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. I have not yet read this book, but this is one of the ones that came with the Sudoku book. It didn't come with it, I bought it. Very important, it is not enough to just not be racist. We have to fight racism by being an anti-racist. Like you hear somebody saying something racist, be like, eh, what, what? Eh, 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 wrong, but you're racist. And then they're like, yeah, I'm not racist, but if somebody is not racist, they wouldn't be saying, I'm not racist, but. I think I referenced this one in a previous shelf, The Condemnation of Blackness by Khalil Gibran Muhammad. Race, crime, and the making of modern urban America. This is a, this is a thick, she's thick. It's a thick one. It's a thick one, look at that. So in the last shelf, I rearranged some of the books and I now have Drinking Coffee Elsewhere Stories by ZZ Packer on this shelf. And I also have the Antifa book, yes. Any more bugs? Gulp, 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 nope. Brutal Imagination, poems by Cornelius Edie, or Eddie. I'm supposing it's Edie. Why do I not know how to pronounce people's names? I got this one on Book Outlet with a bunch of other books and I cannot wait to read it. Walter Mosley's Inside a Silver Box. Also from Book Outlet, it has a 749 sticker, but I think it was actually cheaper than that. I wanted to read more books by black authors and Asian authors, which I love. Haruki Murakami over here. Just trying to broaden, broaden my perspectives and I wanna hear different people's stories and all that cool stuff. The Secret History of Twin Peaks. I love Twin Peaks so much the, the 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 show fire walk with me and then the book oh my god this is so cool one interesting little tidbit about this particular edition is that i had been reading it during a hurricane and then while the hurricane was going on we lost power and i had a heart-shaped salt rock on top of the book the salt rock melted from condensation somehow it left its mark on the book, sad face. Luckily it gets covered by the dust cover so nobody needs to see my special little edition. And then on this end we have Twin Peaks, The Final Dossier, also by Mark Frost. The way that the series really is meant to be experienced is you get the show, then you watch the prequel, Fire Walk With Me, then you read The Secret History of Twin Peaks, then you watch the limited event series and then you read the final dossier that is the experience that i recommend i don't know if there's going to be any more twin peak stuff i would be content if there isn't but if there is i would also be very very happy to experience that let me go ahead and dust i had referenced this one in a previous shelf brown by kamal al soleili again i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly i hope i am read 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 speaking of read 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 i got this far into this book and I know I should have gotten further. Creative Calling by Chase Jarvis. I need to get back into this book because I feel like it's going to help me get even more creative. And I'm feeling creative now with the pandemic, but this is, honestly, I read this much and look at me now, I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> is it a success story? Is it a success story? This is Se Ve Un Pobre Diablo by Nelson Gonzalez. So this is my uncle. He did not publish this book. He passed away in 1996, but he left behind all of these notebooks of poetry, Spanish poetry. And so as a gift for my mom, after my grandma passed away, I went ahead and published one of his books through, is it Luli? Luli.com? I think it's called Luli.com. Yeah, I published it through Luli.com and then I published this one. She has the first one. I have the second one over here. Um, I'm planning on doing more, but I'm planning on hopefully putting them on Amazon instead of on here on Luli where number one, not a whole lot of people really um, have access to it. But number two, I feel like Luli's books are good quality, but Amazon's are, they're better quality. However, their hardcovers, very nice. Tarot, cars for fun and fortune telling. So this is the book that's supposed to go with a deck of cards that I have. It doesn't really go with it, but it's like a separate book that they sold separately from the cards. The cards themselves have the little booklet, but I got this one because it's much more in depth than the little booklet. Since this deck is more of a, a Marseilles deck, like not all of the cards have pictures on them. They're like, let's say the two of wands, it just shows two wands. This kind of helps, you know, 
tell the story a little better. So I got the book. And also I think this is from like the 70s. So it's a little piece of history. The Book of Meditation, The Complete Guide to Modern Meditation by Patricia Carrington, PhD. I got this book because I heard on Amazon that it is very similar, if not extremely close to Transcendental Meditation. Now, if you've heard of Transcendental Meditation, you know that a workshop costs like thousands of dollars. Excuse me, bitch, what the fuck are you doing? Come on, aren't we supposed to make meditation accessible to like everybody? You're like, everybody should meditate, everybody should meditate. Well, not everybody has a thousand fucking dollars for your stupid workshop. So instead I got this book. The only problem is this book is supposed to be accompanied by cassette tapes, which I have a cassette deck, so I don't give a shit about that. But I, I didn't get the cassette tapes with the book and I got it on Amazon and I haven't been able to find the tracks anywhere online. So if y'all have these tapes, can you like post them on YouTube? I just need the damn tapes or like sell me the tapes. I don't care. I haven't been able to find them anywhere. Help me out. I want to transcendentally meditate the fuck out of here. Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. This is a very, very interesting edition in that this is not a book. It's a box. And the books the story is split into two books and it's really cute. I think I got this for like 40 bucks on eBay. Wasn't too bad because I've seen other other sellers sell it for a lot more than that. So I was like, mm. postmodern magic. I've only gotten this far into the book, sadly. This is an old library book and I love old library books. I honestly prefer getting old versions of books like these. Sometimes you get people like highlighting, you get old notes. I love that shit. The Playing Card Oracles by Ana Cortez. I love, love, love these cards. I honestly, okay, so I have a collection of tarot cards. I should go through them one day because I really, really love collecting tarot cards and oracle cards. These are fucking amazing. The artwork is beautiful. I have the US Games System Edition, but I also have the like self-published edition by Ana Cortez. They cost me a pretty penny, but um, it was the prettiest penny that was worth every penny. Too much bug juice. This is going to be a quick going through of all of these books that I have from Amazon. They are all from Damon Brand. They have their own coven where they make these spells. And honestly, I really like it. It feels very postmodern magic to me. It, it just feels magical. So this is Magical Cash Book, Magical Servitors. I actually tried making a servitor and it wasn't really for me, but an interesting book nevertheless. Adventures in Sex Magic, Magical Seduction. I've tried some of this in the past. Didn't really work for me, but the angels of love. As you can see, I was very, very much uh, into love magic and sadly it never really worked out for me. I'm still single. The master works of chaos magic. I haven't, I haven't read this one yet actually, but I've wanted to. I've wanted to get into chaos magic for a long time. And you know what? I might actually read this soon. This is the meditation manual by Koi Fresco. He no longer goes by Koi Fresco. He these days goes by, I forgot the name that he goes by. Let me get some bug juice, maybe it'll help. Gulp, gulp. This was a cute book though. It inspired me to meditate. It inspired me to try mantra meditation, which is really nice. I recommend it. I supported the boy, so I don't know him in real life, by the way. Milk and Vine, which people just stole vines. <laughs> and put them in, wrote them in as poetry, such things like, I wanna be a cowboy and it is Wednesday, my dudes. Ah. There was a whole controversy. And I think that's why I bought the book. Cause I, I love the idea of the controversy of you just took people's vines. And it's like, they weren't making money off of the vines to begin with. I don't know. I don't think it was a whole controversy thing. I think it was just like a fun little doodad. Debs by Susan Howe have not read this, but it is, this is the story of a girl. It's really interestingly presented uh, poetry and I like that. So I'll read it someday. Mind Platter by Najwa Zibian. I feel like I butchered her name. This is a gorgeous, beautiful book. I've only read about half of it. It's just so much to take in that I can't just sit down and read the entire thing. I gotta pull it out when I feel the need to and then read. I've gotten about this far 
into it. I love this book and I love her writing. It's very, very beautiful, very inspirational. Highly recommend it. Sad Girls by Lang Leave. I have not read this one. I do like Lang Leaf's poetry. It's cute shit. So I'm excited to read the novel eventually. I'll read it. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll read it. Factotum by Charles Bukowski. Probably my least favorite novel of his that I have read. It was so frustrating. Have you ever been frustrated by the end of a book? And you're just like... <laughs> the character never fucking changed. There was no arc for him. It was just like terrible shit after terrible shit. I know that's Charles Bukowski's style. That doesn't mean I have to like it. So frustrating. So this is my sister's book. So my sister worked on her own poetry book as well. I helped her out with the formatting. I helped her out with the book. There were some times where she was stuck. She was like, oh my God, I can't like figure this out. And then I would read it and I'd be like, this word and she was like oh my god yes exactly it was a fun little thing that we worked on together it was also on luli hollywood, hollywood by charles bukowski i read this one and i liked it it was much sweeter than factotum for sure it was a cute book it was entertaining as well very entertaining recommend pope by charles bukowski have not read this one just yet but i will i will love is a dog from hell by charles bukowski this was the first bukowski that i read and wow, these poems are like gut-wrenching, but I love them. They're very, whoo, his writing, man. It's just so unique. It's in your face. And at the same time, there's like so many, like, there's layers to it, sweaty. Rest in the Morning by R.H. Sin. This is a signed copy and it's a Barnes and Noble exclusive. I read it. Did I read it? I read it. This is another book of Shakespeare's sonnets, but these are entirely in German. And I bought it because number one, I love German. Number two, I love Shakespeare's sonnets. And number three, I can read German. So I mainly got this to like practice my German reading. Eventually I will be fluent in German, but at the moment I just know how to read it. Gwendy's Button Box by Stephen King and Richard Chismar. This was a pretty good book. If you know Stephen King's work, if you've followed The Dark Tower and know what you're reading, you know exactly who this is. Exactly who this is. And uh, I love it. I think there's a sequel to it out now. I'm gonna wait for it to be on clearance. I'm gonna wait for it to be in the bargain section. I'm not going to spend $25 on a book this small. I'm not. I love you, Stephen King but I'm not. A Curious Mind, The Secret to a Bigger Life by Brian Grazer and Charles Fishman. I love this book. I've only read up to here, but it's so fun. It makes me want to live a more curious life. And honestly, I recommend living a more curious life. Ask more questions of people, of situations. Go out and explore with a mask on and social distancing. Don't just like exist in a bubble, like with blinders on. You know, get to know people, get to know situations, get to know your environment, your world around you. But my phone ran out of space. Yikes. So I stopped recording there and I pulled out my old iPhone 6 Plus. I'm recording now on the iPhone 6 Plus instead of the 11. This is exactly why I need an actual fucking video camera. And I cannot wait for Black Friday or Cyber Monday where I can get my hands on an actual video camera. So yeah. Any dip in quality, just forgive it. Technical difficulties. You are not a gadget. We were just talking about gadgets. A Manifesto by Jaron Lanier. Have not read this. I got this at the same bookstore where I got, remember that weird through a glass darkly book that like the pages are folded into the damn book? Yeah, I got this there too. Quite curious. And I think very, very, um, very important to remember that we are not our gadgets. We are not our phones or our cameras. We are human beings. For now, this book right here. Everyone's an alien, alien, when you're an alien too. It's by Johnny Sun. This book is so freaking cute. Please, please, please. If you need anything uplifting, this is just, this is a quick read. You can read it in a day. It's like little, little comics, little drawings. It's so, Precious, please get your hands on this book. Oh my God, I cherish it and you should cherish it too. Designing Your Life, How to Build a Well-Lived Joyful Life by Bill Burnett and Dave Evans. I have not read this one. It was highly recommended by my director and I got it for Christmas, I believe last year. 
and I still have not read it. I need to though, I need to design my life. I really need to design my life, but this will help me out. This will help me design my life. George Orwell's 1984, a fantastic read, holy shit. Uh, even though Mr. Orwell had a, was a little bit of a Nazi sympathizer, hmm, but still an important book to read and take in and to remember and keep in mind. Also, I mainly bought this book because if you look at the price, it's 1984. Come on, come on. That was perfect. That was perfect. After this, the price went up. So this is once again, my book. This was an earlier edition. This was the first edition. I did not like how the spine looked, so I redesigned it. Same book, but I also, the inside was very, was a lot smaller. So formatting wise, it was just not working out for me. So I reformatted it and then, uh, yeah. Then we have the same book, Spiritual Lobotomy, but this time from Luli. And you see how different it looks? It's glossy, I couldn't get it matte. The formatting just looks completely weird. I just, I didn't like it very much. I prefer the Amazon one over this one. Agnes of God by John Pielmeier. I mispronounced that, I know for sure. It's a play, have not read it but I got it from that same bookshop. The bookshop is called Booksmart, and I remember the bookshop had an orange cat, and he was so sweet. He was a huge, giant orange cat that would just walk up to you and give you cuddles. November 30th, 2018. It's been here for almost two years and I have not read it. Is my bookshelf just where books come to die? It's where they come to shine, because now they're on a video on the internet. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I had, I had, I, I was reading this during college and then halfway through I just stopped. I don't know why, but I'd like to pick it up again. Maybe next year for Halloween. Next we have The Scarlet Letter by Nath Nathaniel Hawthorne. <laughs> have not read it, but I will. Hopefully soon I'll get my hands on it. I mean, I have my hands on it. I'll get my eyes on it. Autopsy, poems by Dante Collins. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book. I've read it and I loved it. The aw awarded most promising young poet by the Academy of American Poets. That should say something. From Arts to Ashes by Alan. This particular poet on Instagram, I don't know if he still does, but I know he used to, like his thing was always posting like his quotes on fire. So I was like, ooh, so I bought it. Yeah, it was a cute book. I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream by Harlan, Elli Harlan Ellison, there we go. I have not read this, uh, but I plan to. I've wanted to read this for a while. I've heard a lot about this particular story, so hopefully soon. Lenormand Fortune Telling Cards by Harold Justin. So Lenormand is a type of card reading system. It's French. It's cute. I love it. I use them from time to time every once in a while. Here I actually have two books from my middle school teacher. They're both in Spanish. This one is Allí están mis versos by Lucrecia Rodriguez, where she wrote poetry and prose dedicated to the island of Cuba. And then this one is Mi Cubania en Brosa. This one's more stories, also based on the island of Cuba. Yeah, Cuban American, so do with that information what you will. Um, I like croquetas. The Empty Space by Peter Brook. A book about the theater, deadly, holy, rough, immediate. I want to sink my teeth into this book, especially when I get more into uh, filming the MWPWS series that I have in mind to work on. I got this book used from Amazon and there's even some like notes taken here. And I love that. It's like, oh yes, pass down the knowledge, zaddy, or whoever had this book before. I'm excited to read it because I love the idea of theater being this like anomalous shape that can take place just about anywhere. It could be in this cube. It could be outside the cube. It could be on top of the cube. It could be underneath the cube. Doesn't even have to be a cube. Spaceship by Robert M. Drake. I read it and I liked it. It's cute shit. Look at all the, look at all those fun images. Ooh, fun stuff. A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. <sighs> Quite the book to read. It's very problematic. 
But oh my god, the way that he tells the story and like the story itself is brutal. It's a heavy book. I, I recommend it if you can stomach it. If you can stomach the things that happen in this book, then I recommend it. And last, we have Fight Club, another movie book. I have not read this one. And don't hate me, but I have not yet seen Fight Club either. I know, I know. It's sacrilege, I know. But I want to read the book. I, don't worry, I know, I already know the ending. It's spoiler alert, obviously. It's the Snape kills Dumbledore or Luke, I'm your father of like this type of movie. Relax, I already know it. But I want to read it and I want to like really dive into it. So now that I have completely gone through the shelf, let's go ahead and dust up whatever we have left to dust up and uh, kill these ants, goddammit. Let's go ahead and organize this baby up. Thank you so very much for watching. If you've made it this far, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, it's fine. You can go ahead and leave a thumbs down. We are all about honesty in this house. Go ahead and let me know what your favorite item on this shelf was in a comment down below. Or if you have a favorite item on your shelf, specifically on your fifth shelf. Go ahead and look at your fifth shelf right now and let me know what you like in that shelf or what you don't like. Is there garbage? Are there ants? Is there chocolate being eaten by ants right now? Very unfortunate if that's the case, but at least we have that one thing in common. If you like this kind of video, go ahead and subscribe. I've got plenty more on the way and I've got a ton of other stuff that I'm working on as well. So go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you know every week on Friday when I post a video, you are right there first in line to watch it. And we're almost done with this shelf. We have one more shelf to go. It's the last shelf at the bottom and I'm wondering what camera angle I'm going to record that in. But I'm excited to film that one and finish up this shelf. And then we have a second shelf right next to it to explore as well. So once again, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And please, please, please do not keep chocolates on your shelf because there will be ants. Um, so drink your bug juice and organize your shelf. Gulp, gulp. It is hot as hell, by the way. It is November in Florida, which is always just basically everyone else's summer. Actually, our winter is everyone else's summer. This is everyone else's um, hell. I know it would help if I didn't have a beanie cooking my brain right now, but um, it's for the video, okay? Just like I only wear these glasses for video, I only wear the beanie every instance of my life. This is where the... Lusty dust comes in. Gulp, 